It's baffled scholars for two millennia. It is a puzzle made of multi-dimensional elements, an enigma with roots that reach back to the dawning of time, perhaps before. Daniel explained part of it. Ezekiel and Isaiah had glimpses into it. John saw it all for the time of the end. That time is now. Join Derek and Sharon Gilbert on a journey that spans the course of history, from Eden to Mount Hermon, from Hermon to Babel, from Babel to Rome, from Rome to the cross, and from there to us. Biblical prophecy is coming true before your eyes, and to understand it, you must discern the times both then and now. It's time to unravel the threads of this all-encompassing prophetic paradox. It's time to unravel revelation. A prophecy against Edom. Welcome to Unraveling Revelation from Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and this is a prophecy against a whole bunch of entities. Oh, yeah. So this is going to be an exciting one, I think. And it even sort of connects into our Gilbert House Fellowship mm -hmm. for this week. Once again, the Lord manages to work it all together so that we can understand it better. Yes. Uh, because that's the cool thing about really digging into the original language and understanding from the academic scholars what the context was. Right. And one of the things that we try to do, because there have been studies of the book of Revelation since the second century AD when Irenaeus was writing about uh, the, what does the number 666 mean? And yeah. then by then the book of Revelation was not even 100 years old. So for 2000 years, we've been trying to untangle, unravel mm -hmm. the book of Revelation. And what we're trying to do that I think is a little different and not trying to repeat what better scholars have done before us is looking at this book through the eyes to the best of our ability of the prophets and the apostles. We are. And honestly, anything that is of value to you, that the Lord uh, tells you this is true, that's him. Yep. Um, we, we, Derek and I, we truly are standing on the shoulders of giants. Amen. Those who in the past have done all of the hard work, including men like uh, Strong. Yes. Who, who, without a computer, compiled a great concordance, which I believe is one of the perfect starting places for understanding the original language. There are more, um, well, newer tools that look at the uh, more recent uh, Qumran scrolls and, and the more recent scholarship from archaeology. So uh, I think, and Gesenius actually mm -hmm. is, uh, I think some, uh, some people say Gesenius, but I always say if it's a G followed by an E, I, or a uh, oh gosh, another one. Anyway, it's a, it softens the G to mm -hmm. a just sound. And, That's and my old... Uh, Diction from opera coming in. <laughs> See, I'm barbershop quartet. Yeah. I don't have any frame of reference can't for this. Can't help it. Can't help it. I uh, don't know if I'm right or not. But here's the thing. We're going to begin with Ezekiel 36. Now, if you're thinking that's odd, it's because last week we talked about the Valley of Dry Bones. This gives more context the, to the promise that is fulfilled when the Lord shows Ezekiel, here's what I'm doing. Yeah. I've been telling you about it for two chapters now. Here's actually, I'm going to show you a picture of it. Draw a picture on the board. Yeah. And this actually relates to what many scholars, including a friend of ours, Joel Richardson, sees as the uh, fulfillment of the prophecies at the end time, in the end times, as God comes from the south, as he did in the days of Moses. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see this in, in verses like Habakkuk 3, where uh, God marches forth from Paran, from mm -hmm. Timon, from Edom. And so the prophecies against Edom take on special significance they, in that context. They really do. Um, this also dovetails with Revelation, where we are talking about the seventh trumpet. And it's announced at the end of the seventh trumpet that the, the earth now belongs to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And after that, we get the bold judgments, the wrath being poured out, which is the seventh trumpet itself. So I think what we're seeing here is being fulfilled, mm -hmm. will be fulfilled. And maybe we're seeing the first waves of that fulfillment right now. Mm. Yeah, times are getting very, very interesting as we see the uh, nearby neighbors of uh, Israel um, professing a, a new tolerance, uh, even friendship for Israel. Yes, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Also, Jordan, once again, wants yes. control of the Temple Mount. They have taken it. Uh, they've reconfigured the Waqf, which is the Islamic institution that, that governs the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. But in so doing, they've taken 
control away from some radical members of the Palestinian Authority they who were have. on the walk. So uh, anything that affects Jordan is uh, essentially covers the includes the the ancient land of Edom and Moab and Ammon. So those uh, in prophecy can refer to the modern nation of Jordan, but. Again, in trying to view the scriptures and the prophecies through the eyes of the prophets who wrote them and understanding the world around them, we, we want to get away from a tendency, we think, to over-naturalize the uh, prophecies of the end times and look for natural explanations that have to be shoehorned into the prophecies mm -hmm. rather than understanding them as messages to the spirit realm, as exactly. you said. And oftentimes what occurs in the spirit realm affects our material Absolutely. space. And Absolutely. so we will see it as a fire or a plague or uh, economic collapse, mm -hmm. but it all began in the spirit realm. So Absolutely. Ezekiel 35. Ezekiel 35. The word of Yahweh came to me, son of man, set your face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it, prophesy against it, and say to it, thus says the Lord Yahweh, behold, I am against you, Mount Seir, and I will stretch out my hand against you, and I will make you a desolation and a waste. Can we stop for a second? Because mm -hmm. he's not talking to uh, a geological formation. No, he is not. Um, Seir in uh, ancient times referred mainly to the land south of uh, the Dead Sea. It uh, it can be a synonym for the re region of Edom or mm -hmm. Edom. Yeah, the Shara um, Mountains. Right, the Shara Mountains. It's another which is, word for Seir. Mm -hmm. yeah. The the range of mountains that uh, runs alongside the east side of the uh, the Arava, which is the valley that connects the uh, Dead Sea and the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. So this is who. He is talking to, but he's talking, as you say, the uh, the spirits that inhabit that region. And there are other prophecies by other prophets, including Isaiah and Obadiah mm -hmm. and uh, Jeremiah, that all refer to the to this area. And it's really interesting. Gilbert House Fellowship this week we are we have the the Exodus, and they're in that region. Right. They are in the region of Paran and Mount Seir, and, mm -hmm. and in those Shara Mountains. Right. And uh, the Nabataeans, by the way, the Arabs who occupied that area from about the 5th century BC through about the 2nd century, 3rd century AD, um, their chief god was named Dushara, which means Lord of the Shara Mountains, Lord of the Seir. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are well, I wrote about this in my book, Bad Moon Rising, which is about the spirits behind modern day Islam. And scholars conclude that it was probably a reference to the old national god of the Edomites mm -hmm. who had occupied that region previously. And their chief god was a god named Kaus, who the evidence suggests was the storm god known to us in the Bible as Baal, who Jesus identified as Satan. So when he's speaking to Mount Seir, Yes. He's addressing these entities. Yes, and very likely addressing the entity that we would call Baal or Satan. Yes. I will lay your cities waste, and you shall become a desolation, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. Now, this is another one, of, by the way, this is another uh, near-term. Already, but not yet. Already, but not yet. This is a near-term fulfillment, but then a future fulfillment as well, because not uh, 50 years after Ezekiel wrote this, he's probably writing this the year prior to the sack mm -hmm. of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, who was two kings after Nebuchadnezzar, led a military campaign against Edom. In fact, they found an inscription on the side of a cliff wall in Jordan, written there, inscribed there at the command of Nabonidus, the last king of Babylon. They pushed the Edomites west into the Negev, the desert in the south of Israel, which is why in the time of Jesus, the Negev was called Idumea, mm -hmm. Edom, and Herod the Great was a, an Idumean. You know, we're still getting used to the idea of being three cameras in here. Yeah. <laughs> so when I talk for more than you know, 10 seconds, I should be addressing my camera, and I guess the other way around. But forgive us if we do, forget to do that. Yes. The main thing for us is just getting the content out there. Right, right. So anyway, already but not yet. Because you cherished a... Because you cherished perpetual enmity and gave over the people of Israel to the power of the sword at the time of their calamity, at the time of their final punishment, therefore, as I live, declares the Lord Yahweh, I will prepare for you blood and blood shall pursue you because you did not hate bloodshed. Therefore, blood shall pursue you. Okay. You are on what verses again? I'm, I just... Those were verses uh, five and six. Well, I just went over to the Septuagint, which is was uh, translated from the Hebrew into Greek in 5th century a, uh, B.C., something like that. 4th uh, century. Um, it says, verse 6, Therefore, as I live, <laughs> as I live, 
says the Lord God, Verily thou hast sinned even to blood, therefore blood shall pursue thee. Hmm. But but be, no, no, let me back up. This is what I actually saw. Sorry. Forgive me. Because thou hast been, the verse 5, because thou hast been a perpetual enemy and laid waste craftily for the house of Israel, laid wait with the hand of enemies with a sword in the time of injustice at the last. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are now at the last. Right, right. Again, another clue that this is an mm-hmm. already but not yet. And what Ezekiel is writing about here is that uh, the Edomites, longtime enemies of Israel, um, at the very least gloated over Israel's and, and Judah's destruction, if not, Romans. if not, well, by the Romans, but I'm talking about the, 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 uh, the, the armies of Babylon. Oh, that's true. Under that Nebuchadnezzar. True. Now, yeah. Nebuchadnezzar sacked Jerusalem in 586 BC, but he had already carried off a number of the, uh, the elites of Judah mm-hmm. 10 years previous. And uh, Edom may have been part of that. Yeah, very much so. You looked at your camera. I, I did, oh. trying to remember. Oh. We got, yeah. So uh, verse 7 now, I will make Mount Seir a waste and a desolation, and I will cut off from it all who come and go, and I will fill its mountains with the slain. On your hills and in your valleys and in all your ravines, those slain with the sword shall fall. Hmm. I will make you a perpetual desolation, and your cities shall not be inhabited. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. So the Lord is making it clear that this is a... A judgment against spirits. Mm-hmm. But interesting that in verse 7 he says, I will destroy from off it men and cattle, and I will fill thy hills and thy valleys with slain men. Mm-hmm. A That's rather quite a picture. Gruesome picture. But we'll see that as we get deeper into Revelation. We mm-hmm. uh, will see when we get to the War of Gog and Magog and the Battle of Armageddon, which mm-hmm. are one and the same. Um, yeah, God talks about a really gruesome sacrificial feast yes yeah, yeah. 37 and 38 don't just start with 30 38. well yes go yes. with 37 right because you said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and uh, he is basically talking about uh israel and judah the divided kingdom mm-hmm. there we will take possession of them, although Yahweh was there. Therefore, as I live, declares the Lord Yahweh, I will deal with you according to the anger and envy that you showed because of your hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I judge you, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. I have heard all the revilings that you had uttered against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate, they are given us to devour. And you magnified yourselves against me with your mouth and multiplied your words against me. I heard it. Thus says the Lord Yahweh, while the whole earth rejoices, I will make you desolate. As you rejoiced over the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so I will deal with you. You shall be desolate, Mount Seir, and all Edom, all of it. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Wow. Now, Obadiah is only one chapter but the entire book of Obadiah, this this one chapter, is a prophecy of the destruction of Edom. Wow. And um, maybe it would be worth taking a look there after we come back from break. I think that's a good idea. So we will do that uh, as we continue looking at the already but not yet prophecy of the destruction of Edom as Unraveling Revelation continues. Call now and get Carl Gallup's brand new eye-opening book, The Summoning, along with a never-before-released two-part summoning companion DVD. This is an exclusive offer for our Skywatch television audience. Yours for a donation of $35 plus shipping and handling. In Carl Gallup's book, The Summoning, you will be thrust headlong into the original days of Noah and experience the moment the antediluvian world was ripped apart at the seams. Walk the Jordan River Valley with Jesus and his disciples as they made their way up to Jerusalem one last time. Be made privy to the true meanings behind the otherwise hard sayings that Jesus proclaimed all along His way to Calvary. How to navigate sensitive topics like self-defense, survival, and prepping while readying your home and family for the days ahead. Learn the shocking truth of what Jesus really meant when He warned that the very last days would be just like the days of Noah. You'll also receive the Summoning Companion DVD. Join Pastor Carl Gallops for this incredible exclusive 2 
two-part sermon. From living without fear in the midst of a global pandemic to the question surrounding what Jesus is telling people through the prophecy of the fig tree and the return of Israel, this companion DVD is a must-have. It is the defining factor of the age we're now living in the most prophetic time since the first coming of Jesus Christ. But that's not all. We are also including the timeless Skywatch TV Classics, Volume 1 and 2. This two-disc collection is valued at $150 all by itself and includes the best of the most popular audio series in the history of our ministry. Now you can re-experience entire audio series like Something Transhuman This Way Comes, The Coming Replacement Humans, As It Was in the Days of Noah, Conspiracy Theory, Special Edition, The Coming Zombie Apocalypse, and Psychotronic Warfare, all on two digitally remastered volumes. Sold separately, these items hold a retail value of $195. Yours now for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling while supplies last. Prepare for the coming days of Noah and realize the chronology of the future as it's finally unveiled in The Summoning Special Offer. Available now at SkywatchTVStore.com. Order now or call 1 844 750 4985. Here are the upcoming conferences and events featuring the team from Skywatch TV. For a full list and complete information, log on to skywatchtv.com slash events or download our free mobile app for iOS and Android devices and Amazon Kindle Fire tablets. We have links to the app stores posted at skywatchtv.com. Welcome back to Unraveling Revelation from Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert coming to you from Studio G1, and we are excited that you are getting so much out of Unraveling Revelation. We've gotten emails from many of you, and We read them all. We apologize. We don't have time to respond to all of them, but we read all of them. And when I read them, at least, I I pray for you. Mm -hmm. I stop and I pray for you. And the Lord is doing wonderful things in the body of in his body. And and uh, many of us are out there lifting up Christ. So if you are doing this and you want to get closer to the Lord, one way to do it, segue here, is to go to Israel. And you can go with us October of this year, 2021. Just go to skywatchinisrael.com, skywatchinisrael.com, and you will see all of the details right there. Absolutely. And uh, one of the places you'll see we will mention here as we dive into the book of Obadiah and compare what uh, he wrote to Ezekiel. Now, Obadiah wrote very near the time of Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. And again, this is about the time that Jerusalem was being sacked by the armies of the Chaldeans. Nebuchadnezzar and his army from Babylon destroyed Jerusalem in 586 BC. Uh, Ezekiel's prophecy written Mm -hmm. shortly before Obadiah, apparently written shortly thereafter. And uh, he wrote the vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord Yahweh concerning Edom. We have heard a report from Yahweh, and a messenger has been sent among the nations. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you've heard these verses before. Rise up. Let us rise against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be utterly despised. Or it may be in the past tense. Behold, I have made you small among the nations. You are utterly despised. Uh-huh. Again, bear in mind, this is about 50 years before Nabonidus, less than 50 years before Nabonidus destroyed Edom and pushed the Edomites oh, yeah. out of what, their country. What chapter and verse are you reading? Uh, Obadiah 1. That's what I thought. Yep, Just... it is the, the only chapter. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Uh, verse 3 now, and this is where it gets interesting. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who live in the clefts of the rock. Ah, ha, ha, yes. Because in Hebrew, that is Selah, S-E-L-A, which is in Greek, Petra. Mm-hmm. You who live in the clefts of Petra in your lofty dwelling, who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Mm-hmm. This is really interesting in the context of the prophecies that the remnant of Israel will be taken out into the desert. There are many prophecy scholars, and we'll look at this in the future, mm-hmm. but many who believe that this refers to Petra as a refuge. Oh, I agree, too. Uh, now, not this in Obadiah, no, but... No, uh, this is a polemic against the humans who side with the spirits, but mainly against the spirits, because this is really interesting. Thou, uh, the pride of thine heart, this is the Septuagint, the pride of thine heart has elated thee. 
dwelling as thou dost in the holes of the rocks, as one that exalts his habitation, saying in his heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Now, in Petra, there are lots and lots of holes in those rocks. They're tombs. Oh, yeah. They are tombs and many niches with little beetles, beetles, mm -hmm. that represent the god Dushara. Mm -hmm. These spirits are supposedly hiding in these holes, these tombs. Yes, yes. And uh, the, cl the cult of the dead, mm -hmm. which is uh, well attested in ancient Israel, but in particular the east side of the Jordan uh -huh. Valley. Um, again, Ezekiel will reference that in his War of Gog and Magog as the valley of the travelers east of the sea. But uh, yes, we've got this here. Now, there is another Edomite stronghold that was called, uh, we believe, Selah. And some scholars don't agree that this refers to Petra, but Petra as a natural defensive position mm -hmm. seems to be a, a really good um, it really candidate does. for this. And it, it's like the Lord is going to kick them out so he can bring his people and put them there. Right. Uh, and I know there's a reference, Amaziah, the King uh, Amaziah uh, in... Uh, the days of uh, Amaziah, the son of King Joash, uh, actually fought a war against the Edomites and destroyed some 25,000 of them at uh -huh. Petra. Yes, yeah. yes, and already, but not yet. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let me skip down here because we're running out of time, but let's go to verse oh, 8. Oh, that's typical. Yeah. Will I not on that day, and again, that's a key phrase that in the Old Testament means the day of Yahweh, the day of judgment mm, the seventh is trumpet 15? this is uh, verse uh, eight actually oh sorry uh, will i not on that day declares yahweh destroy the wise men out of edom and understanding out of mount esau and your mighty men shall be dismayed O timon another that's a city in um, very near petra yeah and uh, often used as a as a synonym for mm -hmm. for edom uh, your mighty men your gibberim shall be dismayed yes. O timon so that every man from mount esau shall be, will be cut off by slaughter. And the reference to Esau, of course, because Edom, Esau, was Jacob's brother, and he founded that nation. Because of the violence done to your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. On that day that you stood aloof, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth, and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, mm -hmm. you were like one of them. But do not gloat over the day of your brother in the day of his misfortune. Do not rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their ruin. Do not boast in the day of distress. Do not enter the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Do not gloat over his disaster in the day of his calamity. Do not loot his wealth in the day of his calamity. I think Obadiah is making a point here. He is indeed. Do not stand at the crossroads to cut off his fugitives. Do not hand over his survivors in the day of distress. For the day of Yahweh is near upon all the nations. Amen. End times prophecy here. Amen. And it says, don't stand in their way as they're escaping. Mm -hmm. What does Jesus say? When you see these things happen, the desolation, flee. yes, the abomination that causes desolation. Yes. Right. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. For as you have drunk on my holy mountain, Zion, mm -hmm. so all the nations shall drink continually. They shall drink and swallow and shall be as though they had never been. But in Mount Zion, there shall be those who escape and it shall be holy. Yes, the nations will come to do battle against God's Mount of Assembly. We see that in Zechariah 14, but uh, they will escape. Mm -hmm. Keep and reading. the house of Jacob shall possess their own possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau stubble. They shall burn them and consume them. There shall be no survivor from the house of Esau, for Yahweh has spoken. Those of the Negev shall possess Mount Esau, and those of the Shephelah shall possess the land of the Philistines. They shall possess the land of Ephraim, the land of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. The exiles of this host of the people of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zarephath, which is... Uh, Boy, up near Sidon in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And the exiles of Jerusalem who are in Sepharad shall possess the cities of the Negev. Saviors shall go up to Mount Zion to rule Mount Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Amen. So, Amen. Yeah, He's the, kicking these spirits and the humans that follow them out. Now, what, what is interesting to note, and we don't, we understand Old Testament prophecy in the light of the New Testament and in the light of Jesus Christ and his future fulfillment. But we, we pay attention to what 
the rabbinic scholars believe so we understand better what Jews believe mm-hmm. because it helps us to try to witness and understand what they believe to witness to them. Yes, because um, sadly, not every Jew who is in Jerusalem at that time will flee because they're going to believe that this person is one of the two messiahs, either Messiah ben David or Messiah ben Joseph. Joseph. Right. And, and they tend to view Edom as the Roman Catholic Church, that Edom somehow is uh, reached world power in the form of Roman Catholicism mm-hmm. or Christendom, if you well, will. Well, the fact that they do believe that may mean that something will happen within the Catholic Church at about that same time to make them believe it's been fulfilled. That's possible. Another great, another aspect of the Great Deception, yeah. which will be multifaceted. There is no one fulfillment. Because the, we're told that the, uh, the Fatima revelations, mm-hmm. that one of those showed uh, Maria uh, that that the white bishop will be walking up a hill and he'll see dead bodies all next to him. Mm -hmm. Tom Horn has written about Mm -hmm. that as well in The Final Roman Emperor. So, yeah, there's a lot to to cover in in this, and uh, this is just like a surface sketch, but just a reminder that when we're looking at this, we, we have to consider the spirit realm. Exactly, because I don't believe that realm. was, I don't think those Fatima visions were from no. the Lord God Almighty in any way, shape, or form. No. Um, and, and there are other prophecies that reference the, the spirits of the Negev. Mm-hmm. Isaiah prophesied against them. And uh, it was specula- speculation on my part, but I wondered if that was not in some measure a prophecy of the future rise of Islam, as we mentioned last week, we, we believe that Petra was the original location of the Kaaba and Dushara was the entity there who was worshipped in the form of a cube Kaaba mm-hmm. in uh, the temple of Dushara, which yeah. is at the end of the colonnaded street in, in Petra. Exactly. We show you that in our DVD travelogumentary, uh, the search for the Rephaim. But uh, if you would like to actually see it in person, go to Israel and then go to Jordan the extension to Jordan. Uh, it, they're very, very friendly over in Jordan, and Petra is an incredible experience. It is. It is a bucket list item. I mean, if, if you've seen the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, that place where they see the, you know, the, the Holy Grail. Yeah, I suppose it that was, uh, The exterior it. shot is what they call the treasury at Petra. It's not really the treasury, it's, or never was. It was a temple, mm-hmm. or it was rather a tomb for one mm-hmm. of the uh, kings of the Nabataeans. But there's more to Petra than just that. And we'll tell you about that quietly because we don't want to offend the hosts over there. But uh, we, we do believe that there's more to Petra on a spiritual level, both past and future. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why we took this little detour through the exactly. nation of Edom today. And going there in October is a great time to go because uh, you're not going to get any floods in Petra. If it rains exceedingly, you're likely to get some floods. But also it's going to be a little bit cooler. Yes. In fact, you may even want a jacket at night. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that, well, the whole Jordan extension, uh, the view that Moses saw from Mount Nebo and what's prophetically significant about that. Mm -hmm. And we may try to see some dolmens while we're there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we thank you for watching. This is uh, an ongoing journey, and we appreciate you joining us for it. This is Unraveling Revelation from Skywatch TV. Unraveling Revelation is part of Skywatch TV, a viewer supported ministry. To learn more about Skywatch TV and the work of our sister ministry, Whispering Ponies Ranch, please visit our website, skywatchtv.com.